Hey guys, welcome to the Wild Side, and this week I'm back at Once in a While with this incredible colubrid. I just learned what that word means too. We'll find out all about it this week on the Wild Side. my pleasure to introduce you to a California king snake. Look at this. This is more of a coastal king snake, more of a brown tint to the black uh, and white stripes. Now, inland species of the California king are very black and white, very, very, the banded color. Now, this band helps them to do a couple things. Number one is disruptive coloration. As they move through the brush and the undergrowth, it's hard to keep track on what part of the snake you're looking at, but honestly, they're like this because they're imposters. They're trying to freak out other animals. Look, this banding makes you think, oh, that must be a venomous animal or something that can really hurt me. In fact, California king snakes are not a venomous species whatsoever. Now, California king snakes get their name, like all king snakes, because they eat other snakes. Now, how many of you are probably afraid of snakes? Yeah, I know, plenty of you, especially you, I get it but you would want a California king snake or a king snake in your backyard. You see, these animals can eat venomous snakes like a rattlesnake. So what they'll do is they'll wait for that rattlesnake to S its body. And then when the rattlesnake strikes at the king snake, the king snake in turn strikes and grabs the rattlesnake right behind the head and then swallows them down whole. But because that animal is a snake as well, they actually swallow that rattlesnake down whole while it's still alive. And then inside, the digestive juices and the, the body starts to break down the rattlesnake and that's how they expire. Isn't that incredible? Now, many of you have probably seen your king snakes, your fair share of king snakes in your own backyard. Remember, these animals are extremely important for our environment, so we should care and, uh, about these animals living in our backyard and we should invite them. You see, you need the good snakes to keep out the snakes that could do you some severe harm. And the best way to do that, Google it, read a book, watch the wild side, go to talk to the, our friends at once in a while about the snakes that you want to invite into your backyard and ones you may want to avoid. Now this is a colubrid, as I said in our intro. That means they're one of four different types of snakes. Colubrids include rat snakes, king snakes, things of that sort. Then you have venomous snakes, similar to a, a, a cobra or a taipan or a mamba or a rattlesnake. You have constrictors like a python or a boa. And then you have one that I can't wait to feature on the wild side, a sea snake. These animals, you can find them in the Arabian Sea or all over it, like near Australia. Very, very venomous animals, but they spend their life at sea. Those are the four different types of snakes. Most of the snakes you probably run into on a daily basis are the colubrids. They're very, very common all over the world, especially here in North America. Now this animal, like other snakes, has no eyelids, so it can't blink. Look at that. It's got its tongue, which it tastes the air with, sticks that tongue out, <laughs> tastes the air, and brings the tongue into what's called a Jacobson's organ. That allows them to kind of navigate their environment, find food, stay away from other predators. They can also leave a musk. They can leave a smell out of their hind end to let other snakes know that they are in the vicinity. Now, they have no external ears, so if you were to scream, <laughs> And they can't hear you. They can't at all. Now look how he's moving through my hand. Because of his positioning, you might think, oh, that does look like a constrictor. The boas or the pythons that I featured on the show before. It's not. This animal does not have that constricting power. However, when it does strike, they can use those constricting motions to hang on to their prey. But they're not using those motions to really just suffocate their prey as a python or a boa would. It's more strike fast, constrict, hopefully to cut off the airflow quickly, and then swallow that prey down completely whole. Now, what does an animal of this size eat? Well, they're eating little rats, little mice, little tiny amphibians, frogs, small birds. Uh, different colubrids can also eat bird eggs, having specialized grooves in the tops of their mouth to crack open the egg. Uh, but that's what this animal would eat. Now look at those nostrils. Look at that nose right there. Look at that thing. You would think, oh, that must be for smell. Remember, they're using their tongue to taste the air. That is how this animal breathes. Uh, of course, they can get in the water and swim around. In fact, they do need the water 
to help get their skin nice and moisturized to help them shed. They shed every six to nine weeks or so. And the way they shed is they actually will rub up on rocks and logs and their skin will unroll off of their body, kind of like a wet sock that you maybe had on your big tall uh, calf sock and you roll it off. If you go walking on a nature walk or find a snake shed in your backyard and it's all together, you can tell that snake was very well hydrated. The skin came off all in one piece. If you find patches of snake skin all over your yard, that might be an animal who's having a hard shed, a hard time getting through the shed. Could show there's some dehydration. Uh, could also show that it was under stress during the shed. Maybe things were ripping at it or it was moving quickly away from things and parts of the skin was falling off. You can tell awesome little facts about the animals in your environment by knowing how to read the sign. Now, California king snakes and other colubrids are a very popular pet item. These animals are manageable. They only grow up to about four to five feet long. They don't weigh very much, well under eight pounds, uh, even at their heaviest. However, like any exotic animal, please do your research. Do not try to go out and make a snake a member of your family because you think it might be fun. Guys, thanks for tuning in this week to The Wild Side. This is a California king, not a large bed. It's an amazing snake. As always, folks, stay wild, conservation rules, and please head over to onceinawild.com, learn about Amanda, Ricky, and the entire organization, and help bring them into your home through a virtual program or through an in-person live encounter with their amazing collection. Until next week, everyone, stay on that conservation trail. Remember, animals rule. And we'll see you next week when we highlight yet another of your favorite species. Until then, see you later, everybody.